Coach Prime has tweeted about the GOAT. Wow, college football just lost the GOAT to retirement. Wow. I knew it would happen one day soon, but not this soon. The game has changed so much that it chased the GOAT away. College football, let's hold up our mirrors and say, honestly, what you see. Roy Wood Jr., Alabama got to do a series of guest coaches like The Daily Show. Don't nobody want all that pressure. And uh, there are some reports that Tumor's Corner had been rolled. Some of you may remember that was the genesis of uh, the Harvey Updike call when uh, Paul Bryant died in January of 1983, that uh, he claimed that it had been rolled. It had not. Uh, let's get to Reese Davis, uh, who has uh, been at the vanguard of uh, college football, like Nick Saban, and been with Nick Saban so many times. Reese, thank you very much. And certainly, uh, it's crossed everyone's mind at some point, but it was one of those stories that I think you had to see it to believe it. Good afternoon. Totally agree with you, Paul. I mean, you and I have had this discussion a few times over the years. Um, I think coaching college football at that level at a program like Alabama for most people uh, chips away at them little by little, day by day. But I've always said that Nick needed it like most people need oxygen. And there have been many times, and I'm sure you've had the conversations with him over the years, where he contemplated what it would be like if he were to step aside and do something else. But I never, you know, you always thought, well, look, he, he appears to be in great health. He had a great uh, year this year. He probably enjoyed uh, being able to develop a team over the course of the year the way he did, um, more so than uh, many of the years in his career. So even with all of the rumors and even the fact that he's 72 and even with all of the uh, changes in college football that Dion mentioned in the tweet that you just showed, uh, you still really thought, well, he needs to coach, so he probably won't step aside. So uh, this, I, I would say, a little bit surprising, even given all of those circumstances. Uh, because we've seen him on your set at the national championship game, and we did not see that mm -hmm. this year, unless I missed it. Uh, was that? Can you explain that? Uh, the invitation was extended, and he decided not to take it this time. The invitation is always open uh, and, and always has been there because he's phenomenal in that role on television. So, um, you know, he, he wanted to decompress a little bit. And that, I don't remember which year, Paul. I think there was one other year in which he, you know, decided not to do it. So I, I didn't really take that as some type of a warning signal or anything of that nature, and perhaps I missed that. But I thought it was just, you know, it was a pretty short period of time between the Rose Bowl and the national championship game this year. So, um, you know, they, certainly the offer was extended. The invitation was extended. And we would have loved to have had him. But, he, you know, he chose to uh, – obviously now we know that he was probably contemplating some very serious things about what he wanted to do in terms of continuing on or not. And, and I'm curious about something because uh, the only reason I know this is that uh, I ran into him last year in, uh, in California. He was literally staying in the room next to mine. But he came out there a, a day early, and I, I know he went to all these meetings with, with your group. Uh, mm -hmm. What's it like to be in a, a game day meeting and, and a national championship meeting with, when there's, there's Nick Saban in one of the little, little, little chairs uh, like everybody else? Well, you learn a lot, and I think you um, – I mean, we always want to be at our best. I mean, I think you you always want that on your show, and we certainly do too. But when when Nick comes in, you want to make sure that you're buttoned up. And, uh, you know, and, and he wants to know. He wants to know what we're doing, why we're doing it. And he, you know, he was really great about wanting to go over the, the rundown, which is the outline of what we're going to talk about and when. And it's not really scripted. So it's not scripted at all, but uh, we don't even really always do an order of who's going to speak next. We want to make it conversational. Very good at that. Wanted to know if he was going to start when, you know, if there was tape involved, he would look at that and or tell us, you know, exactly what he wanted to see. So, you know, he he's really engaged and involved. He doesn't just show up and um, and rest on the laurels. He um uh, the funniest one that I remember, Paul, was I think it was the LSU Clemson national championship game. And as you know, those half times because of advertising uh, requirements are very, very short. And he came into New Orleans. He did halftime with us. And we also had um, there were, I think, maybe the 150th anniversary team or something was being honored. And we were going to introduce them. So that also took out a, a chunk of time from halftime. 
And so we finished the segment and he had talked about the first half briefly and that was going to be it for that halftime. And he looked at me and he said, is that it? And I said, yeah, you know, we, we're introducing these teams. And he looked at, and he said, he said, that can't be it. I've got a lot of, of stuff. I'll say, I got a lot of stuff I want to say. <laughs> you have to find someplace else to say it because you know, we're done here. But, uh, but it was, uh, it was great. And it showed the level of his, of his preparation for, uh, for even an assignment like that. You should have told him that's why you should get on uh, Twitter. Uh, you can express yourself like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it's it's interesting, Reese, because you got to Alabama in the aftermath uh, of Paul Bryant, and I'm, I mean, I'm sure you haven't had a chance to think about any of this yet. But but it, it is just amazing, uh, especially for a student uh, in the late uh, '80s at Alabama to to be hearing about how great. Bryant was, and not really get anything that was that great, but now get to be, have a front row seat to Nick Saban's tenure. It, it was a remarkable thing, and I know this is uh, blasphemous in some quarters of, of my home state, but uh, Paul Bryant was a great, great coach, it, as culturally important as, as any figure uh, in Alabama history, for sure, the state, not just the university. But in my judgment, Nick Saban is the greatest college football coach who ever lived. And, you know, it's not just counting championships. They have the same number at Alabama. Nick has another one at LSU. I think it's the impact on players that's doing it in this era where scholarships were limited. It's also succeeding in an era where um, your roster is much more transient than it was in the previous eras. And I still think, Paul, maybe something your audience would understand better than a national audience is that not that you don't have a national audience, but I mean, people in the South, the core people understand fixing LSU is an unbelievable accomplishment because for your entire life, my entire life, LSU was one of the sleeping giants. Couldn't get it right. Coaching graveyard. Maybe have a good year, never had a great run. And he went there and fixed it. Fixed it to the point that two subsequent coaches certainly did it their own way certainly deserve all the credit on their own, but the infrastructure and the, uh, the parameters were set at LSU for the first time that helped Les Miles, Ed Ogeron, uh, succeed and win national championships subsequently. So I think fixing LSU, uh, in addition uh, to the uh, unparalleled accomplishments at Alabama, really make it or the thing to me that make him the greatest coach who ever lived in college football. Reese, many thanks. Uh, it's been one of those days, and I know you've been busy uh, with SportsCenter. Thank you very, very much. Reese Davis, the host of College Game Day. <laughs> 